Okay, here's what we got right now. I'm gonna give you, um, as we start getting ready for the draft uh, this April, right at the end of the XFL season. That's right, XFL, more on that in the second half. Um, these are gonna be my top 10 NFL prospects going on right now. Let's start at number one, and this is pretty much unanimous around uh, the country, no matter who you look at. Chase Young, I did seven of his games. I've been around him for a number of years. Chase Young is the best prospect in the draft. That doesn't mean he's gonna get selected number one, likely the number two pick in the draft. He's an absolutely uh, fantastic pass rusher, a generational talent. And with what the other Ohio State pass rushers, namely the two Bosa's, have been doing in the NFL, uh, what Nick has been doing obviously this year, uh, Chase's value is going to continue to go up. Number two uh, on my big board, Joe Burrow, the quarterback at LSU. He will be your number one player selected in the draft. So congratulations, Bengal fans. You now have a Burrow. Jimmy Joe Burrow. Uh, Burrow is fantastic. Here's what I love about Joe Burrow just real quick. Burrow now has operated an NFL offense and he's done so against some of the best defenses in college football. This is the number one defense in college football that he's shredding right now through the second quarter and now we'll see what he does in the second half. He's always calm. He's surgical in some respects. If he's given time, he can always get to his second and third man. He throws with accuracy. I love what Burrow does. And remember, in the NFL, it still comes down to owning the game, controlling the game from the pocket. So as much as everyone wants to talk about the nature of the game changing and the style of the position changing. Yes, that's true, but remember, individuals make the position great. You know, Aaron Rodgers doesn't have to be Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson doesn't have to be Aaron Rodgers. Neither of them have to be Tom Brady. You've got to be great at who you are. Burrow is a great quarterback. Um, I think that he's going to really work out in the NFL, although I don't envy him having to go play in Cincinnati. <clears throat> Number three. On my big board is Isaiah Simmons of Clemson, the linebacker slash do everything Swiss Army knife for the Clemson Tigers. Uh, this guy is a phenomenal player. You're seeing that in some respects tonight. Outside of Isaiah Simmons, they're a bit suspect on defense, in particular in some of those matchups. But when LSU has tried to attack specifically Isaiah Simmons, he's been ready. He's been the best player on the field uh, for them, at least. And we'll see how he continues to play uh, here ongoing. Number four on my top 10 in NFL prospects is Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy is a phenomenal player. He really is. Um, this is a guy that's got the speed, the catch radius, the hands. He understands route structure. He understands uh, NFL style of offense. Remember, they've had NFL coordinators roll through there. Steve Sarkeesian has rolled through there. He understands what he's doing, and he is electric on the outside. Big player, got hands, got speed. He's going to have a huge NFL career. Number five. Jeff Okuda, the corner from Ohio State. This guy is the best corner in the draft. I think he could, could get selected in the top five based on need. He's got great length. He's about 6'1". He's strong. And my favorite part about Jeff Okuda is that he's really willing in the run game to be physical and tackle. Not every corner, in particular great cover corners, are willing in the physical nature of the game. Okuda certainly is. This guy can and will be in the future a turnover machine. We saw that against uh, Clemson, although that call um, miraculously for Clemson got overturned and Jeff Okuda is my number five. All right, number six, Tua. Okay. Tua's injury is going to be like the topic of all the conversation when it comes to the NFL draft. Do you take him early? Do you pass on him because of that fractured hip? His injury history with the two ankle surgeries. When healthy, he's one of the best players in the draft. I'm rating him right here as kind of a combination. If he was completely healthy right now, I would have him at number three, full disclosure. He's not fully healthy, I moved him down to six. I think there's a chance he could get drafted in the top five. I think there's a chance he could slip into the low 20s based on the health evaluations of these NFL franchises. Uh, the decision is going to be talked about whether he should have stayed at Alabama, whether he wants to go. I think he made the right decision. The bottom line for me with Tua is that he, he is not staying healthy on a year-in and year-out basis. This is a couple of years in a row now where he's had trouble with his ankles. Now he has the fractured hip. We haven't seen him play a full season yet. Yet, uh, at any level outside of high school 
and, and stay healthy. So that's something that they're going to be looking at from NFL franchises. But when you look at his play on the field, he's accurate. Um, he's not overly athletic, but he does move decently well. He throws the ball on time. I think he's one of the best anticipatory throwers that we've seen in a long time. So Tua, for me, is still a great prospect. Someone's going to have to take a chance on him based on that injury history. But Tua, for me, is going to be at number six on my big board. Number seven. C.D. Lamb, the wide receiver for Oklahoma. I put him behind Jerry Judy, so on a big board of wide receivers, you're going to have Jerry Judy first, C.D. Lamb number two. Now, C.D. Lamb is the best wide receiver in this draft after the catch. I think he's also great in terms of catch radius, catching in traffic. He runs decent routes, although they're not quite as precise as Jerry Judy. That's the reason I have him a little bit lower. But C.D. Lamb is an absolute monster, and I could see him having a huge NFL career in his future. Again, after the catch with the football in his hands, he does things that are just absolutely magical. If you were to pause the film on some runs against like, let's say Texas and say like, hey, he scored on this play, you'd be like, what? My mind is blown. There's no way he scored and he was in the end zone. Number eight is Andrew Thomas, the offensive tackle at Georgia. This guy is a thoroughbred. He's a great player. He's athletic. He moves well. He's got power in the run game. He's one of the reasons why they've been so good in particular running the football. I think that he can and will get better in pass protection. He's got strong hands long arms. Uh, I really like him up front. Andrew Thomas is my number one offensive tackle in the draft. At number nine, Grant Delpit, the safety for LSU, uh, the Thorpe Award winner. Now, Delpit is more instincts than he is physicality. Uh, he's not a guy that's going to come up there and just be a monster when it comes to being physical, but I think his instincts from a free safety perspective are very good. And in today's NFL, what you're seeing is more middle closed structure than you are middle open structure. Here's what I mean by that. If you don't mind, can, we, can you pan over here? Do you mind this? Really quickly, <clears throat> yeah, you got it right here. Okay, middle close, middle open. Free safety, strong safety. This is a middle open look, right? So like, let's say here's the football, here's the quarterback. Regardless of what your formation is, there's two safeties in the middle of the field. So this is open, okay? You don't see this quite as much anymore in college football and in the NFL because you see a lot of man coverage. You see a lot of teams trying to uh, jump down and get after the run. So what you see is you see the free safety here and then the strong safety is coming down if this is the football and there's your quarterback. Okay, so this is middle closed. One safety in the middle of the field, the middle is closed. Two safeties in the field, the middle of the field is open, open, closed. All structures of defense come out of open and closed. They'll tell you a lot about the nature of that structure of defense. I tell you that because I think Delpit can and will be a really good free safety. Um, I think that he's got the instincts to play free, like an Earl Thomas style. He can come down. He's instinctual enough to come down, but I really like him being kind of a middle of the field player. And then number 10 for me on my top 10 is Derek Brown, the defensive tackle from Auburn. Derek Brown is an absolute monster. Uh, I think he easily could be higher than this. I really toyed with putting him at eight and bumping Andrew Thomas and Grant Delpit down a slot. Uh, but rest assured, folks, you see some draft boards or, or you know, big boards of players and Reggie, you know this too. And you'll see like, man, these top two guys, everyone loves them, but then it kind of falls off. And it, mm -hmm. this is a really deep draft. Yeah, it it's really deep at wide receiver. Yeah. Burrow makes this very interesting at the quarterback position. You've got pass rushers, uh, you've got corners, you've got defensive tackles. I think that the it's probably the weakest in offensive tackles, but there's still some to be uh, available. But for me, Iowa. man, this is my top 10. A guy from Iowa. Um, Worfs. Yeah, uh, Tristan Worse, what do you think about him? I think he's amazing. I think he's really young. You put him up? You still put him above? Uh, I put Andrew Thomas above because I think Worfs is raw. Yeah. So he just turned 20. He's strong. Yeah. I think he's still growing into his body. And he's not quite the pass protector I want him to be, but he will be. Listen, Worfs is, is like right here. Yeah. And it wouldn't shock me at all if by the time we get to the draft, Worfs would actually be the top yeah. offensive tackle in yeah. the draft. I Sunday on Fox you ain't seen nothing yet. with a trip to the Super Bowl on the line Aaron Rodgers looks to move one step closer to a second ring Touchdown! but Jimmy Garoppolo and the 49ers stand in his way looking to continue their storybook season Packers 49ers Woo!
the NFC Championship game presented by Intuit TurboTax. Sunday at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoy that clip, make sure you click subscribe somewhere down here. From game highlights to exclusive interviews and rankings, we've got everything you need as a college football fan right here. College football on Fox.